Welcome to The Long Dark. This is a game about surviving in the Alaskan, Alaskan northern wilderness <laughs> amongst scary wolves and freezing cold weather for as long as you possibly can. Here we go. A mysterious geomagnetic storm has brought your plane crashing down into the northern Canadian wilderness. How long can you survive? I was a Cub Scout, and I was quite good at it. Oh, let's see what Kurt Vonnegut has to say. It's hard to adapt to chaos, but it can be done. I'm living proof of that. It can be done. Holy cow! Okay, um, oh F. That was a wolf. You heard it. I heard it. Um, oh, where, where is this? Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> oh, excuse the F word. Um, holy cow. I've never started off that near a wolf before. I hear him. We need to ascertain exactly where he is. Um, but yeah, look at that. Oh, wow. All right. I just need to see. This is a river. And it looks like it heads in that direction. <laughs> this might be a very short playthrough if I don't locate where exactly this wolf is. Because in this game, nothing is out to get you. The weather, maybe, if you anthropomorphize it. Except for the wolves, which are unequivocally your worst enemy. In real life, they're actually relatively shy, like they won't come after you. Um, you know, be careful and don't welcome their you know, presence, but there's no need to be overly scared of wolves in the wilderness, unless you're maybe a small child. Okay, quick look out over here, we see some cottages over there and some what appear to be fishing shacks. Right now it is very cold and we need to get into shelter. Uh, further, we have some basic stuff, but I don't see any food in there, so we definitely need food. There's no plane nearby, so the presumption is that, um... Ooh, I better watch spraining my ankle here. Alright, there we go. Um, the presumption is that I've already been surviving out in the wild, walking away from my plane crash. There's the wolf right there. So we'll go over away from him. He sounded a lot closer than that. He might have a buddy. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get the flare out. Oh, man. We lucked out there, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. What did I tell you? There was another wolf. Jesus. <sighs> I'm glad I have face cam. I'll uh, fade in my face to so you can get my facial reaction there. Holy! <laughs> oh man, that was not the way I want to start. Oh, a flag. Looks Canadian. I wonder how much of the national anthem of Canada I know. Oh, Canada, my home and native land. Reminds me of a uh, South Park with them. Um... Oh, what were their names? Oh, I feel like an idiot that I don't remember the name of the Terrence and Philip. Terrence and Philip. I have a feeling, though, that we won't see any of them in this game. Maybe that's how they should, like... Like, uh, they send a helicopter your way, and they come down, and it's all South Park animated style, just like... And coming out of it is, like, Terrence and Philip and a bunch of other Canadians and with a South Park style, like, heads flapping. It's like... We're here to save you! Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah! Get in our chopper! It's... It's warm and safe in there. We'll go to Ontario. Yeah, something like that. 
Oh. Poor guy. Man. You know, this flare is useless. And it's very loud, I apologize for that. Okay, so we're just raiding the uh, ice plate, uh, ice uh, fishing houses here. Uh, it may be a possibility that we come back when we have a tool to break the ice fishing hole and fish, but we'll just have to see how things go. We are very cold, and those ice fishing huts aren't as close to the wind as we would like them to be. So we're going to go into one of these huts over here. Now the place with the Canada flag uh, seems to be the lodge associated with these log cabins. Like during summer people would come here for like, um, you know, vacation. And that would be like the, the camp lodge. But my objective in the first day, because we have a whole afternoon left, is to raid these cabins for supplies, and then hopefully we can go to the lodge and there'll be a bit more accommodations there. But let's see what's inside one of these. Oh, finally indoors a little bit. It's very dark. But looking in the crates here, we see a tin of sardines, condensed milk, newsprint roll, we can use the newsprint roll for uh, tender. Some antiseptic, excellent. Because I think we take a lot for granted in our daily lives. We have quick access to a lot of materials that we are simply unable to make ourselves. There's whole industries of amazing people with amazing technology and infrastructure and industry behind them that produce things like antibiotics and antiseptic. And although there are homebrew versions of that that aren't too unfeasible to make for ourselves, they really are a product of our civilization. And so, games like this, a lot of their interest lies in the fact that they're pointing out things that enable the really kind of marvelous level of living standard that we have these days. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that's me being a bit adorative of how things are. But really, like, when was the last time you hunted for your food? I know I haven't. I've gone fishing. Which counts. But I certainly didn't feed myself for even a whole day off of it. Because like I was saying, I was a Cub Scout. And, you know, no one had more arrow points than I did. <laughs> but, um, I never really transitioned to the full Boy Scout experience where you actually do, like, you know, you might go out for, you know, a week backpacking or long hunting trips and stuff like that. Because in Cub Scouts, for me at least, it was really fun uh, arts and crafts, you know, you do a soapbox derby or you know, any manner of like birdhouse construction, knowing about, you know, safety uh, tips when you're out and about. Certainly didn't have to collect firewood at this rate with this much at stake. But I have a feeling that um, if Cub Scouts were as extreme as to throw you into the northern Canadian wilderness with uh, nothing but the clothes on your back and maybe a flare. Maybe parents wouldn't uh, let their kids do it on the regular. <laughs> so, we're learning here. Although this game is kind of amusing in a way because uh, in the pre-roll credits, like uh, when it's loading up the game, they say, uh, uh, we do not condone the wanton killing of animal wildlife. And, although we strive for realism in our games, 
the long dark does not represent a replacement for proper wilderness survival training. I just found that quite amusing. But frankly, it's a good warning because even in a game like this where they have every incentive to be realistic, you know, to provide the most immersion for the player, it's tempting to think you know a lot after a game like this. But the fact is, is that this is a very thin, although albeit enjoyable, slice of what presumably would mean to survive in the wild by yourself. For example, just the basic fact that we have these, you know, meters, like we know what time it is, we know the different temperatures, we know immediately our exact fatigue, cold, hunger, thirst, calorie count. We know how to repair, harvest, and forage wood. We know how to administer first aid. These are things that I would be skeptical that the average person knows how to do. I, I know I certainly don't. I do come from a family, though, with a long outdoors tradition. Um, in particular, I think of my uncles and grandparents, um, particularly on my, uh, on my mom's side, uh, the Marlers. They, they know their way around, you know, a, a rifle or, you know, being able to do okay out in the wild. Uh, they grew up in Idaho and, I mean, I don't mean to say that everyone from Idaho is a wilderness expert, but it's really fun being in Idaho to go do those things like fishing and hunting and, you know, backpacking and all that sort of thing, which even though people, let's say, I don't know, like um, uh, New York, like if you lived near New York City, that stuff is far away. And even if you would en enjoy doing it, you have to kind of make a weekend out of it. And... I think most people end up not going there. Ooh, we just picked up a military MRE. That's just a... Those things are modern-day Marvel. Oh, and we got a peacoat. A uh, peacoat is nice because although it's a bit heavy, about five pounds, it's very warm. And we need that very badly right now. So put on those. Oh, put on some mittens, too. A touch warmer here than uh, basic gloves, and in better condition as well. We are very cold, and our condition is dropping. But I want to get to the next house really quick before we maybe have lunch. Let's see. I think we've got all the lakeside cabins. So I'm going to quickly go over here to the fishing shack, and then we're going to pop over the uh, ridge there. I'm running now, which might not be the best use of calories, but we have just found a lot of food, and I'm more prioritized on like uh, not having to come out to this section again, because I plan to move out from here, because if there is going to be evac, or if there's going to be any kind of rescue attempt, uh, this resort is going to be very low on their list of priorities. So we need to kind of book out of this area as fast as we can. Maybe find uh, a road. And if there's going to be a road, it's going to be by the camp lodge. Presumably the people have to get here somehow, right? Even if it is by a four-wheeler, there'll be trails leading away. This is a bit steep. I'm going to kind of hug the side here. Let's see, it's starting to cloud up a little bit, but air temperature isn't that bad. It's freezing, but I th think we'll be able to make it. If I remember right, or at least I've heard, it's often the first day that your survival when out alone is uh, crucially dependent on. We lucked out 
in the, that we started near civilization. Um, but if we had to like <laughs> tackle a deer and like punch it in the face until it died so that we could eat its raw flesh, um, first of all, that would be very demoralizing. Second, and possibly more importantly, it might not be possible. Oh, have we already researched this? Oh, we have. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, we're going over here. Um, we, it would be unlikely that we'd be able to do anything about it. Like, our teeth aren't strong enough to bite through high without... <laughs> Anyways, it's kind of a ridiculous scenario. You aren't going to tackle a deer. They're just too skittish. You can't get up that close to them. And we don't have a gun on us. We used a flare. Although we did find a second flare to uh, scare off that wolf. <laughs> I thought the series was going to end right there. I rem I'm glad I remember the hotkey for pulling out the flare. It was on our belt. Okay, let's get inside here before it's too cold. It's 1.20 and we're getting quite hungry. So I'll just run inside. Yeah, that's that's that place. Just <laughs> apparently it's called Mystery Lake. I hate coming over ridges. You never know what's over them. Okay, it looks like we have a clearing up there, but this looks like a good place to kind of. Take inventory, be out of the cold. Okay, it's very dark in here. In post, I'll brighten it up so you can see. But for me, it's just a little bit blue tinged and maybe a little brighter near the windows. Okay, we got some lighter fluid. Fire striker. We got some wood newsprint. On the table here we have... Oh, a hook. Hook and line. We can get some fish in. A granola bar. Beef jerky. We are warming up a bit, but we're... Mm, we're getting quite hungry. But we're warming up by burning calories, and that's heating up our coat. And because we're inside, the air isn't taking it off of our skin. And so I'm going to let us warm up a bit more. Not uh, let our calories go down, maybe another 200 or so. Just with the idea that when we eat, we want to have the full effect. And we aren't... We're hungry, like we're peckish, but we aren't starving. I always try to keep my calories above 500 in this game. Oh no. We already saw one dead guy, but now it's a pattern. You had a granola bar. Why didn't you continue? Alright, let's see what you have. Damn. Can we bury him? Take him outside? Look in here. Okay, we have a wood stove, some beds, but just as important when you're surviving, or as I've, as at least what I've heard, is that it's important to keep the right state of mind. We have to stay positive and proactive, and keep alert. We can't let things get to us. We might be surviving, but there's no reason to be angsty about it. Alright, so I'll pick up all of this. Am I missing anything? Oh, a first aid kit! A candy bar is vital first aid, so is a bandage. And water bottle. Excellent. We didn't have any water bottle, but we picked up some soda, and that water 
as well. And so that means that we're doing okay for hydration. But I'm still going to start a fire here. What kind of stuff do we have? Okay, we have newsprint. We'll kind of keep that handy. We have a lot of wood. And we have a lot of lighter fluid. We're actually looking really good in terms of fire production right now. Okay, our cold is down enough that I'm willing to eat. Now, if the game differs in any way from real life, I'm, I'm sure it does, let me know if you have any survival tips. I have played this a bit before, but my good run was kind of based off of a very fortunate set of weather conditions and luck. I'm not sure I could reproduce it offhand. So, th give me your survival tips. I'm gonna try not to pre-record too much. Particularly this first episode, I'm gonna stop after the time limit's done. Alright, we'll get some peaches. Oh, we don't have a can opener though. We can smash the can, but we might spill some. Oh, but everything we have is canned. Oh, except beef jerky. Yeah, we'll have some of that. Eat up. Oh, we'll have a bag of salty crackers as well. It'll make us a bit thirsty, but we're gonna have a drink anyways, so it's efficient. We'll have a soda, just to kind of reward us for making, reward ourselves. It's nice and sweet, but we do need to keep actual water in us. Ah. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna start a fire, but it's a bit early in the day. But we're cold and we're tired. Alright, we'll do that. We'll use one of our lighter fluids. We'll want to keep at least one spare in case of an emergency, if we like have to start a fire in the wind outside at some point. But frankly, it's heavy right now. Oh, here we go. And we'll melt a bit of snow. Kind of uh, burn some time. Get warm. Yeah, there we go. Add another piece of wood. And boil up that water. the bedroll here for later. I'm not going to sleep near a corpse. It might be infectious, but it's more about just respect for the dead. If we could drag him out into the snow and do a snow um, grave, I would consider doing that. We couldn't dig one just out of concern for our calories. But I think we could spare that much if the game would let us. I hope they do that before they release the game. Because uh, Long Dark is a beta game. Alright, I'm going to call the episode. Thanks for watching. Hopefully we can survive together. Peace.